In this video, we'll linearize some nonlinear data so we can perform least squares regression. This is actually a follow up video to the linearizing nonlinear equations for linear regression video. In that video, we were motivated by wanting to find some unknown parameters of an RC circuit. Although we went over the basic concept behind transforming nonlinear equations into a linear form, we never actually solved the problem. In this video, we'll do just that. The voltage across the resistor is modeled by a decaying exponential. We know that R equals 2.5 mega ohms, or 2.5 times 10 to the 6 ohms. We have some data pertaining to the voltage of the resistor over time, but we do not know the battery voltage V or the capacitance C. Our goal is to use least squares regression to find these values, then use the values to predict the resistor's voltage at some times. Let's pop into MATLAB to examine the data. I already wrote the code to load and plot the data. As always, you should plot the data just to see what it looks like even if you already know the governing equation. The data is definitely nonlinear. It also resembles a decaying exponential, which agrees with the equation. Speaking of which, let's linearize the equation. To linearize the equation we're given, we should take the natural log of both sides to eliminate the exponential. I'm just going to rearrange the right-hand side so it makes the slope and intercept more apparent. The goal is to transform the equation into this form. We can see that ln vr corresponds to y, negative 1 over rc corresponds to the slope, t is the x, and ln v is the y-intercept. This matches what we found in the previous video. A plot of ln vr versus t will look linear, so we can curve fit as usual, but we need to use ln vr instead of just vr. Let's go back to MATLAB to do this. Now that we're back in MATLAB, we can compute and plot the linearized data. Recall that MATLAB computes the natural log using the log function. There's no ln function. We plotted ln vr on the y-axis and the regular t data along the x-axis. It looks pretty linear, so this confirms the correctness of our linearization. Now we can use the fit command and some post-processing commands to construct the least squares regression. The best fit line generated by the fit command conforms to our data incredibly well. Note that we only supplied one argument to the plot command. MATLAB is smart enough to recognize that FO is a special MATLAB object, so it plots the best fit line when given to the plot function without explicitly needing a second argument to the plot command. The poly1 argument specifies that we want to fit a polynomial of degree 1, or a straight line, to the data. Remember that we need to supply the transform data, xt and yt, instead of the original data. However, in this specific case, xt is equivalent to the regular t data by means of the linearization, but this isn't always true. The two outputs of the fit function are fo and goff. The goff output holds some goodness of fit statistics, including the r squared. It also includes some other metrics bundled into it, but those are beyond the scope of the class. fo is the curve fit object created by the fit command. We can see that the curve fit object holds the slope and the intercept of the curve fit. To actually extract the values, we need to use the cofvalues command.
The cofvalues command returns a vector containing the values of a1 and a0, which are the slope and intercept, respectively. From the linearization, we know that a1 equals q and a0 equals ln of p, so p equals e to the a0. In the context of our problem, we know that the battery voltage v is equal to p. We know that a1 equals negative 1 over rc, so c equals negative 1 over r times a1. These give us the missing parameter values of the rc circuit. We can also see that the r squared value is very close to 1. Now that we have the curve fit coefficients, we should draw the equation governing the resistor's voltage through the original data points. I called this anonymous function myVR to represent the curve fit through the original points. You also could have done myVR equals at t, p times exp, q times t as well. The plot tells us that the curve fits the data pretty well. The last part of the problem wants us to predict the resistor's voltage at 2.5 and 27 seconds. This is easy. All we have to do is plug these times into the equation of the best fit line. The predicted points are indicated by the upside down pink triangles. In both the plot of the regular data and the linearized data, the predicted points are where we expect them to be. Keep in mind that when we plot the linearized predicted points, we need to take the natural log of the VR values. We also could have obtained both values of VR predict by issuing the following statement. We supply the predicted time values to the FO object, and then we take the exponential of the returned values. As you can see, the FO variable is quite flexible. In addition to storing the equation of the best fit line, you can supply it as a sole argument to the plot command to plot the best fit line. Finally, you can give it inputs to predict values. This concludes the RC circuit problem. To summarize, we linearize a set of nonlinear data, use the fit command and other associated functions to fit a straight line to the linearized data, then obtain the values of some unknown parameters using the equation of the best fit line. As always, we generate multiple plots and use it to confirm the numerical answers we received. See you next time.